other project, we're going to open up uh, project number three. So from your projects folder, project three, and it should come up like this. Remember, if you need to reconnect the material, you can go back to the section on trimming. At the beginning of the section on trimming, I describe how to do the reconnection process. So the next thing I want to do is do a little animation here. Some of these images are kind of static, like this shot here of the water it just kind of sits there. So I want to do a little animation, a little push. Let me show you how to do that. First thing I'm going to do is open the clip into the viewer. Double click on the clip that's in the timeline, brings it into the viewer, and I'm going to rearrange my window layout. When you're doing animation, it's really much simpler to work with a larger window arrangement, a bigger viewer and a bigger canvas. Go up to Window, Arrange, Two Up, and you get this. You can always rearrange your windows a little bit. Just put the cursor between the windows and you can drag them and that will resize them, let you customize the layout. So here's the viewer and here's my canvas. Let's go to the Motion tab. Click on the Motion tab and this will show you the clip. This pale portion here in this area is the clip itself. This area is called the keyframe graph. It's where you can keyframe things. What a keyframe is, it defines how an image looks at a particular moment in time, at a particular frame of video. So we're gonna do this animation in the canvas. In the canvas itself, here, I'm gonna remove this cross dissolve that I have here to make this a little bit easier for you. Click on the cross dissolve, press the delete key and it's gone. So I'm on the first frame of this, image, you can see it here, the L indicates I'm on the first frame. In the canvas, this pop-up here is the view pop-up. If you select that and go to image plus wireframe or press the W key, it will switch you to image plus wireframe. When the image is selected, you'll see this wireframe. The two indicates that the image is on V2, on video track two. This is the zoom pop-up. I'm gonna set this to fit all. It gives me a little bit of the gray board around it, makes it easier to grab the image. So here at the beginning, I'm just going to scale it up a little bit. To scale up the image, you can just grab the corner of it here and drag it. I will scale it up. And that's being reflected here in the scale value in the motion tab. So what I want to do is I want to add a keyframe for this scale value and for the center value. The center value is its position on the frame. I'm going to click on the little keyframe button. That little button there becomes green. It tells me I'm on a scale keyframe. The wireframe becomes green. I'm going to add a center point keyframe. Click on that little dot in the center becomes green. I'm going to go about three quarters of the way through the image, right about there in the timeline. You can either do it in the timeline or the canvas. These two playheads are locked to each other. And here I'm going to scale the image up. Again, I can do that either here in the, in the motion tab with the slider, or I can just grab the corner of the image and drag it out and scale that up a little bit. If I scale it up to about 35% or so. It's a little bit low in the frame. I want it to, to not sit quite so much on the water. So I'm going to grab the image and pull it down. I'm going to hold the shift key while I do that. That keeps it going straight. So I'll see a little bit more of the skyline. So this indicates the motion path. So in addition to scaling up, the image will also move down in the frame. So let's see how that looks. If I play this back here, you have this little animation of the image that will push into the image. Let's do another one further down here. The first thing I want to do though is I want to replace one of the shots. Down here around the 121 mark, there is this shot here of this landscape and I want to just replace it with another shot. Very simple to do. From my browser in the cat bin, I'm going to open that up. There's this cityscape bin. There's a shot called Roll 6008 this shot here, I want to put that into the timeline. So just make sure the playhead here is somewhere over this shot. Make sure the playhead is over this shot here that you want to replace and that this is set as the destination or target track. If V2 is the target track, the playhead is over that clip. If you press F11 for replace or the blue button here, it will replace that shot with the shot from the browser. Again, the shot is a little bit small, so we can resize it right in the canvas. Just click on the shot. We're still in image and wireframe mode. I can just grab the corner of it, pull it out, and stretch it out to cover up cat. And one more animation we'll do here on this image about the 153 mark. It's this spiral looking image. I actually want it to rotate. So a simple way to do this is to go to the beginning of the image and select the image. And this little button is a keyframe button. It keyframes all of the motion properties. The motion properties are scale, rotate, center, 
crop, distort, they can all be keyframed with this one button. Click on this and all of those properties become keyframed. Go to the end of the clip, use the down arrow key to take you to the end of the clip, and the down arrow key again, because you want to make sure that you're on the last frame of that video, so I'm actually not seeing that clip anymore. So I want to go to the last frame of this. I'm going to open this into the viewer to make it a little bit easier to do. So I can go to the motion tab here, go to the last frame, shift O will take you to the last frame of that video. You don't see it in the canvas because it's uh, because of the transition that's there, but you're on the last frame of the video here. Notice that all these keyframes have been applied. All these properties have been keyframed with that one button. I don't need to add another keyframe. I just need to change the properties. I'm going to scale up the image a little bit. So it's going to push into the image, and I'm going to rotate it. I'll give it a couple of, notice here if I go around here, I want to scale a little bit further than that so the image doesn't go off the screen when I rotate it. And uh, maybe I'll give it one full rotation. So now when you play this back, you get this spiraling effect into the image. And what I might do is I might remove cat from underneath it. To remove cat from underneath it here, the simplest way is to hold on the option key and click on the clip. That will allow you to select the video independently from the audio. Normally, if you select the video, and the audio gets selected with it. But with the option key, you're toggling linked selection. Now I can delete that, and so now I'll just have black underneath the image. So when it rotates, I won't see cat. I'll just see that rotation of the image. If that rotation is too fast, I'll just go to this end keyframe, click on that button here. This will move me between keyframes. Let's click on that button. Instead of having one full rotation, maybe I'll just dial it back so it's a much shorter rotation, and that will slow down the rotation. And the last thing, I want to reset my canvas so that it fills the window. You can click on the canvas here to make it active, and Shift-Z, as in the timeline, will fit the image to the canvas.